hi everyone today i am giving you information on the topic cataract this is the cataract part 2 so let's begin with the risk of cataract what are the risk of cataract or who have the risk of cataract the risk of cataract increases as you get older as one increases in the age the risk of cataract increases okay other risk factor now the other risk factor including the certain diseases for example diabetes hypertension which is the hd and or the high blood pressure next one is the asthma next one is the thyroid disorder next one is the ischemic heart disease all these are the certain diseases which also gives the risk of the cataract in one's life next one is the personal behavior personal behavior includes the smoking as well as alcohol use okay if the person is uh, interested in smoking as well as in drinking alcohol then he or she have the risk of the cataract will develop in eyes next one is the environment prolonged exposure of the uv rays those persons which work in the direct sunlight have the risk of the cataract because they comes in contact with the uv rays and those person uh, who goes for chemotherapy or chemo radiations comes in contact with chemo radiations those also have the risk of cataract because all kind of radiations affects the eye also next one are the symptoms of cataract now what are the symptoms of cataract first one is the cloudy or blurry vision the vision is there but everything appears to be cloudy or blurry color seen faded every color is seen but it is in lightish color seen by the cataractous eye or the cataractous lens clear headlights lamps or sunlight may appear too bright okay now what is a glare this one is the glare Uh, wait. This one is the glare. Okay, glare may be seen around the headlights, and halo may be seen. This one is the light, and a uh, halo may be seen around the light in case of the cataract. Next one, lamps or the sunlight may appear too bright. Sunlight or the lamps appears too bright, so the patient. will not go in the afternoon outside the home because these things disturb the patient who have the cataract next one poor night vision the patient is not be able to go outside the home at the night time because he or she is not be able to cross or find it very difficult to crossing the road due to the glare headlights lamps due to all these things okay the patient have the poor night vision or the light of different things may shine in the patient eye and will not be able to see anything for some time next one is double vision or the multiple images seen in the one eye okay in one eye double images or the multiple images may be seen of a single thing frequent prescription changes in your eye or the contact lens uh as the development of the cataract takes place early and early eye glasses or the number of the or the power of the eye glasses or the power of the contact lenses gets changed next one is detection of cataract there are the different a lot of different tests are done to detect the cataract first one is cataract is detected through a comprehensive eye exam includes first one is the visual acuity and the second one is the tonometry okay visual acuity exam in case of visual acuity exam the eye chart is used to measure how the patient will see at the various distances okay normally it is placed at the 6 meter or sometime it is placed at the led is placed at the 3 meter so that it will reflect into the eye by 6 meters normally uh, with this chart the patient have to read the seven lines easily in case of normal case okay from the bigger letter to the smaller letter the patient have to read at the different distances but in case of cataract we have to look how much the patient can read and how much the patient can read it develop on the de- development of the cataract it is directly related to the development of the cataract okay sometimes the person will read only a single letter but it looks blur sometimes the patient will guess that this letter is this okay next one but if the patient is not be able to see even a single letter then we will use the fingers we will ask the patient that how many fingers are seen at the different distances fc is the finger counting at 1 meter 2 meter 3 meter 4 meter will count the fingers okay next one if the patient is not be able to see the fingers at the 1 meter then we will ask patient by taking close fingers to the patient's eye and ask the patient that is the finger counting close to face 
okay he or she can respond in finger counting close to face next one is the hncf hand movement close to the face will move our hand in front of the patient eyes and ask the patient is he or she is able to see our hand or not okay so in this way we will clear out that the hand movement close to face is seen by the patient okay next one is the projection of light uh, will project the torch light in the patient eye and ask the patient is he is able to see the torch light or not okay if the patient can see the projection of light which means pl then we will do the pr in case of pr uh, this one is the upper side this one is the lower side this one is the nasal side and this one is the temporal side okay and here the eye is present of a patient we will project the light into the four directions for example from here we'll ask the patient he or she is able to light uh, he or she is able to see the light in the different directions if can see then we will put plus 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 here if not be able to see then we will put minus at the different sides okay this one is the projection of rays so in this way we will find out the direction at which the patient is able to see the light or not next one if the patient is not be able to respond on the projection of rays or projection of light we will ask the patient is the torch light is visible to the patient or not okay if the light is not visible to the patient then we will write just no pl which means no vision is there in case of patient's eye so this was all about the visual acuity examination by which we will find out the better results that will the patient be able to see after the cataract surgery or not okay in case of no pl mostly persons will not see there is no vision so no expectation should be keep by the patient from this kind of surgery next one is tonometry now tonometry is a procedure which is used to done to check the pressure of the eye before the dilatation an instrument measure the pressure inside the eye for a dilatation is known as tonometer okay so let's see this one is the tonometer okay in this way the procedure is seen so let's discuss the procedure patient should be anesthetized with the proparagin first of all we'll put the paragin inside the patient eye and anesthesia is apply on the patient eye okay in case of with the patient in supine position we will ask the patient to uh, be in a sleeping position looking up at the fixation target we'll give the fixation target to the patient okay sometimes we'll give the feeling target to the patient fan target to the patient and sometimes we will give the fingertip of the patient's hand as a target okay and the examiner have to hold the both of the lids of the patient so that he or she is not be able to move with the another hand of the examiner will put this area on the cornea of the patient okay so the deflection of a needle here the needle is present needle deflection will show us the readings of the pressure of an eye of a patient okay scale reading is measured then we will move the scale readings uh, so that the 5.5 gram weight is initially used okay in case of tonometer already 5.5 gram is weight is applied here okay by which we can examine the pressure of the eye of a patient okay this is known as plunger okay next one is if the scale reading is less than 4 the additional weight is added to the plunger okay if the deflection needle shows the reading less than 4 then we will apply weight on the reading scale we will apply the weight to the tonometer iop measurement is repeated only until three consecutive readings agree within 0.5 scale units okay three readings should be taken by the examiner so we will find the average of the three readings conversion table is used to derive iop in mmhg from the scale reading and plunger weight okay this one is the conversion table okay so if the reading becomes 5 then 5.5 gram weight is applied we will write the reading 17.3 the normal pressure of the patient i is less than 20 okay so uh, 10 reading is shown then we will write the 7.1 okay for till 4.5 the pressure is normal and by this the pressure becomes high if the reading is 
less than 4 then we have to apply the weight we will uh, apply the 7.5 gram weight to keep it a normal condition then if it does not come back to the normal position they will have to apply more and more weight to the uh, plunger more and more weight to the tonometer so how much by applying how much weight the reading becomes normal we have to see it normally we will use this area okay which in which the weight is totally all the already applied okay this was the end thanks for your patience listening this is the proper procedure and here the deflection will be shown by the tonometer